Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn modern day mod here today on the channel. This is episode 2 of my Australia series. Here today, we're going to be continuing to secure our defense of our island nation by conquering other smaller island nations uh, in and around us. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. In the last episode, if you haven't gone and watched it, highly recommend it. We managed to conquer New Zealand and bring it into being a state of Australia. Here today, we're going to start things off going into the Solomon Islands, which should be a little bit easier to take over than New Zealand. They shouldn't have anywhere near the size of Army, Air Force, slash Navy. Then we'll look to go into Papua New Guinea, and then we'll uh, basically assess how strong our military apparatus is to maybe go after Indonesia, which will be definitely easier said than done. So we're going to set up this justification. We'll get the Navy to operate in the far north of Queensland and try and dominate the Coral Sea. We'll get our Air Force as well. They're just going to be out of reach there, but we actually might not need aerial supremacy. But we'll see how we go. The ADF, the Australian Defence Force, is currently leading the country under Admiral Chris. And we're slowly but surely building up to make the South East Asian Defence Force faction. That's what I want to do. We're going to make our own sort of sphere of influence down in the south with Australia leading the charge essentially. So we've divided the units and armies up into a seven and a six unit battalion and we'll set up this naval invasion. Okay so we probably can centralize slightly We've got everything maxed out as well. Healthcare, welfare, hospitals. And we've got $470 billion in the bank. So it's probably not a bad idea to go on the foreign market and buy small arms, vehicles, whatever we can get our hands on from other nations. Because we've only got 20 factories generating logistics and gear. So for whatever reason, it is way too easy for our economy to start booming because we're mostly focusing on ex exports i suppose like and it's not even that expensive to get more small arms and logistic equipment either so we're nearly better off just to spend a bunch of this so let's spend like 200 billion on equipment throughout the world and we'll try and bring it on in and we're still making a nice amount of income i think it's because we start off taxing the populace so much which is interesting. But it is March 2003. 23% world tension. Stuff's going crazy in the Middle East, as always. But apart from that, I'm curious to see how this alternative timeline playthrough ends on out. Because they're like forming factions over there for whatever reason. That's what some of those pop-ups were. So, we currently have 400k manpower, our war support and stability is slowly but surely growing, and we currently are 244 days from having max fuel capacity as well. But things are looking good for Australia. Okay, so we've gone down all of improving the nationalist staff. Uh, we probably need to increase that to a secret police operating in New Zealand because the populace still isn't overly happy from being, well, conquered and being brought in as a state. We're still mostly popular, 56%, but it has dropped sharply. It was at a 70% popularity, but maybe we just need to attack some of the influence and then gain some of our own. But I'd be surprised... If there was another Australian Civil War, to be honest, like we had in the first episode, I could use uh, some more steel here. Same with rubber as well. I'd rather get it from Vietnam rather than Indonesia because we're probably going to be at odds with them soon. And we're still increasing our 
construction and production efficiency, which in some areas is still stuck in the bloody 90s. <laughs> so we'll try and improve that. And our justification as well is slowly but surely coming along. Okay. But our political life at the moment is okay. So this is 2005 stuff. We can't even go down here. Maybe getting more onshore oil supply. More petroleum is uh, probably not a bad idea. But everything else, I think we're fine. Okay, so how much are we going to lose? Because, oh, it was only 100. wasn't even like that much. It was like 70 billion. Absolutely nothing. So we need... Man pads, some vehicles and stuff as well. So we might need to prioritize them. Yeah, so what are we operating with? British end laws. Some Swedish equipment. Yeah, we've got a whole host of rifles here. American, our own org variant. German. Israeli equipment, the TAR. Nice. So that's what sort of the... Um, logistics we've got from a bunch of nations. Let's just try and get a bunch of them. Let's keep on doing this as well. Like, why not? We've got the money. What else can we spend this for? Maybe if we start war decking countries, our debt might grow, but we'll see how we go. It's probably not a bad idea as well to build up our railways further. Maybe get some more industry now that we've got the money and we've secured ourselves politically like we can't even go down any more of this stuff we're already at huge military spending yeah like look at this and we're still making an absolute shit ton of money and we've got some more units here as well that we can eventually send on over okay the war justification has been complete perfect let's uh move into the solomons We've run the war games, and it should be an over-resounding victory, you would imagine. Okay, let's go with Strike Force. We could even go with a convoy rating if we want. We've increased the navy slightly with 13 ships. Mostly submarines, because that's all we can afford to construct at the moment. No, it's not the nuclear subs. We're still operating with the... Um, I believe the subs were an old Swedish variant, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's right. I think I read that somewhere, somewhere. That the Swedish, without, I don't know. I bet you, wherever you are, you probably heard about the whole Australian fucking submarine debacle. Particularly if you're French. But yeah, I think they, they <laughs> the Swedish did offer to retrofit those old subs. So we want to try and... I wonder if that's a thing we can choose. Going with French or American nuclear subs. <laughs> Fuck it, I... Speaking of the French, they're still hanging out there and they're in New Caledonia. Alright, so we've landed in the capital. And thankfully all the islands seem to be connected, so we should be able to swarm on in. And they have no <laughs> army. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be super quick. It's only... Are they going to fall within like 24 hours? The UK and South Africa are sending us logistics. Oh my god, we've just walked on in. And I guess we'll just try and bring this into our own territory so we can have the... Um, the resources. We're still not at a stage yet where I'm comfortable enough to subjugate slash puppet vassalize countries. Oh my god. So we've got the Treaty of Honiara, and let's just incorporate the Solomon Islands into another state of Australia. So who we got here? We got New Caledonia. Yeah, because I don't want to go to war with the French over it, so we might have to leave them there. So we've got Vanuatu. Alright, let's uh, move them out. So what do we got here? So we've got Papua New Guinea, formerly German New Guinea, which is kind of weird that the Germans held this. You forget in World War II, we actually occupied this as a weird sort of state at one point. 
It's like we were controlling it governmentally. That was one of our first things. We we took we took it uh, off the Germans, which is kind of funny. And we're gonna try and take it back. All right. So I don't even know if there was even a point of taking that for factories because we've even lost it because we needed to trade more rubber and steel. But there might be some small resources on the island. Realistically, you would imagine just having these islands, there's a really high chance of having natural gas and other lucrative resources in that exclusive economic zone. That's why a lot of countries want those islands and stuff. Especially with the, um, the hydrocarbon resources as well. So, I guess we'll roleplay sort of taking those islands for that. Okay, so I think we're going to continue to build up the Australian economy. Nice little quick war. And then we'll move on to Papua New Guinea as well. And try and incorporate them into another state of Australia, mate. All right, let's move everyone back to uh, Cairns and we'll launch another naval invasion. Okay, so this one might be a little bit more difficult. So we're going to go la land in Port Mosby. Now, hopefully they have a bit of an army, so we're going to have some action compared to last time. But we'll see how we go. So we'll launch from sunny Cairns. And we'll go here as well. And... Thankfully, we've got an airbase in the Northern Territory, so we can probably send them over. Because we are super close to Papua New Guinea. You can probably see it from the far northern tip. I'd imagine you probably can't make that. I wonder if you can make that crossing. I'd imagine there'd be sharks and crocodiles and absolute fucking madness across that strait. But I wonder if you could do it. I wonder how far that is from Papua to far north Queensland. And could you actually, like, swim it? <laughs> oh, okay. Looks like there's a civil war going on over there. What's happened? Huh. Looks like they've split away there. Emerging, uh, of course. Uh-oh. Things are happening over here in the Oblast. Oh, wow. As if they annex them. What the... They're going crazy in this campaign. Alright. Let's set up these drills. So once it's complete, we can uh, go soon in October. Nice. The justification is complete. And let's uh, move into Papua New Guinea. Let's get the Navy. Where is it? There. To run some strike forces. Now, hopefully we don't get intercepted in our new islands. I could have launched from the Solomon Sea, but we're fine. Okay, unfortunately we got a little too few mini jets here, but it's okay. We could probably send some further south. They probably can still reach. All right, the naval invasion has been kicked off. And we are meeting some resistance here in Port Mosby. But if we can flank around in the rear guard, we should be okay. We do have air supremacy over the top. We've also landed navally. So we've got the RAF helping us out in this one. The Royal Australian Air Force. And we might need it over here because they do have some small military that we've more than likely trained, so they know our tactics. We want to try and secure the airbase as quickly as possible so that we're not running into anyone else's fighters. Port Mosby's been secured, so let's just try and secure the south here. It's a little bit tricky conquering these island nations because there's just so many individual islands that make up 
the nation, which is interesting. Look at, like, I didn't realize that Papua New Guinea has, like, six islands to its east there. Most of the victory points are going to be on this main island here. We're actually struggling to get into their new capital now. All right, we're pushing firmly into the jungle. We've knocked out 750 of them. We haven't lost a single Australian. And now we're on the border of Indonesia. And they've capitulated. Nice. Oh, we've managed to seize a bunch of fuel, which is interesting. Heaps of rubber here. And we're going to take all of uh, Papua New Guinea under our control. And rule it once again like we did in uh, WW2. Nice. Well. Jeez. Now that we border them. How much population do we have? 500k. I think we make plans to go to war with Indonesia, but it's going to be easier said than done because we're essentially probably going to have to do five naval invasions, so we might have to skip a little bit ahead because it's going to take a little bit of while to build on up. We might just need a turtle, get ready, get a bunch of military equipment as well. Um, I don't think we're going to have any uprisings. We should be able to keep these other nations in check. But, yeah, in my opinion, Indonesia is probably the hardest country to take in Millennium Dawn. Dude, to be fair, even in vanilla Hearts of Iron 4 with the Dutch East Indies trying to tackle them, it's just because you need heaps of naval supremacy and air. And there's so many islands with victory points. It's kind of crazy. Dude, as if they're going at each other. Oh my god. So he really is trying to create like an Arab super state. That's kind of cool. I do appreciate AI factions when they go around conquering and uniting other nations. We're putting more military factories in dockyards as well. Well, let's do it. Let's do a... Justification, 200 days. It's currently August now, 2004. So, another half a year. Hopefully we're ready. Oh my god, they're throwing them back as well, the Persians. So the Ruskies are backing them, okay. Now with conquering those other island nations, we've got 730 K manpower. We could even maybe reduce some of the conscription if we wanted to. Um, thing. Oh, it looks like they're winning. Good on them. Go fucking go. All right. Back down here. We've got most of the army on the border here in Papua New Guinea and then we've got the rest operating in uh, Darwin we've got our air force set up as well and I guess we'll split everyone up now with our fresh equipment to naval invade from Darwin I think that's the play but it's gonna be interesting will the Australian Navy hold up against the Indonesian it only just needs to support the naval invasions firstly, rather than actively engaging the Indonesian fleet. But I don't know. I would imagine they have numerical naval supremacy rather than superior. So let's set up some naval invasions. Because we're going to have to take multiple islands. So let's send one to Bali. <laughs> So, some of the fucking Australians would know the way. Let's send one to Borneo. Which is interesting, because they're actually moving their capital in real life. Uh, Indonesia, because it floods so much. I think they're moving it to Borneo, actually. So, if we're successful, we might try and puppet the country. I don't know. I have to think about it. I've increased to 35 factories now, November 2004. We currently have 
just over 20 divisions as well. I'm currently trying to get some better quality fighter jets. Uh, we're still trying to upgrade the Australian economy. But it's only going to be a matter of time before this justification is complete. Only a hundred more days. And this is essentially make or break for the series. <laughs> because if we can't defeat Indonesia here today, we're not going to be able to really go after anyone else. Like, this is our big test. Hopefully, we've got enough levels. We're battle-hardened. We've got the experience. But this could be a... Uh, a crazy conflict to come as we're pushing into 2005 now. Alright, March now, 2005. The invasion of West Papua has been confirmed and hopefully we can do it. Oh my god. So, if we can tie down most of the army on the island of Papua, that would be a good idea. We'll get those naval invasions going with a bunch more infantry coming. Now, we're using the default templates because we just don't have the experience of the manpower to have huge divisions like the US, but here we go. Hopefully we can do it. We've got the Air Force over Papua. We've got the Navy in as well. We've got a bunch of fuel, which should last us. Okay, so we've got a couple of squadrons. We'll try and get them to Borneo. We might try and prioritize capturing as well air bases so we can bring them over from Australia. Because most of the air force is operating in Papua New Guinea, the former territory. Mostly from Western Australia and uh, the Northern Territory as well. Our navy is quite large. But they just need to essentially run with some naval support and security for our divisions. So the naval invasions have been launched and fierce fighting is happening on the border. We are winning but we're definitely losing in some areas as well. Okay, they've for some reason left the center there of the country vulnerable. And Turkey? Italy? Ascending logistics? Okay, nice. So we've landed. Well, let's try and seize the capital, Jakarta, as quickly as possible. Let's move into the north as well. Make sure everyone's on aggressive. We've landed in Borneo. So, now that we have the ports, the more tiles we can take, the better. And then if we come into resistance, we'll hold up. Alright. But yeah, it seems like they put a lot of their units in Papua, which is interesting. Alright, let's get the next uh, land here. Okay, nice. We've got this airbase under our control. So, let's get the fighters that are in Western Australia to land. And we'll try and get them to run air supremacy drills over the top. We'll try and take this other airfield down here as well. Because air supremacy... Dude, I talk about it so much in Millennium Dawn, it's vital. Alright, we've run into some... ...forces here, but we're taking a lot of Borneo, which is nice. But that's the thing, man. Indonesia's tough because you've got so many of these islands you have to deal with. We're literally fighting on four fronts. Alright, we seem to have naval supremacy by the look of it. We could switch to strike force, but I kind of don't want to start raiding or going against their navy. England seems to be helping us, or Britain. Okay, let's continue to try and take more territory. Half of Borneo is now under our control, but now they're dropping troops. We're about to take the entirety of the southern island here. Nice. We've taken territory. Unopposed, but now it's starting to turn into a bit of a stalemate. Now that we're actively fighting. But we are winning in some tiles, not in Borneo there. Jakarta's looking a bit better. We might need to run... Hmm. Maybe move the Air Force here. Alright. So they are still holding out on some of that front line. Oh, we're winning other... Oh, we're getting pushed back here in Jakarta. Nice. Things are looking good. 
but it is very, very close here. Nice. If we can push towards the capital, because now we've got essentially uh, 14 or so units here. Uh, let's continue there. We've got a bunch of military factories and dockyards now. We've got an ace pilot. Hell yeah. We've got Maverick flying in the side, <laughs> uh, giving us air support over the top. Yeah, they seem to be really holding out here. Well, let's try and surround them. Oh, nice. Okay, so that air support's really helping out. Um, let's move you here, because then we want to help over Borneo. I actually don't know the names of some of these islands. I need to learn them. Okay, we're flanking well. But what to do with a lot of this territory? We're going to be able to secure the world rubber supply, essentially. But to be fair, popu the population is going to be insane. If we can use some of that, that'd be nice. Okay, we're doing well here. We're slowly but surely gaining territory, but we are getting caught off. There is some stalemates in some areas, but overall, we're looking good. We're looking really, really good. We're about to surround a bunch of divisions there that we can hopefully crush. We're improving our fighter capacity, but to be fair, we seem to have... Decent air supremacy, even with inferior fighters. So it looks like they won their war in the east. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, they're getting surrounded. They seem to be holding here, though, in the north. If we can free up our units here, that would be really beneficial. But now that we're out of fuel, the war is really slowing down. Our advances... All right. Let's uh, move the navy out. I don't think they really can do much more. But we've probably taken half of their territory, to be fair. I'm still wanting to get better quality fighter jets, because that's what we can focus on now that the economy and production is maxed out, stats-wise. Oh my god, we've knocked out 31k. Crazy. And they're slowly but surely... Going to capitulate as well. They're putting up a really good stand here, though. It's just these small pockets here. Nice. We're about to secure this island. But overall, we're definitely winning. Alright, there's a small little enclave holding out here. Nice. Well, once Pop was secure we should be able to send them over to the Jakarta front to help on out and we're still running with aerial supremacy as well but supply and logistics and just sort of the jungle and forest and mountainous terrain in some of these islands would be really quite tough to move on through and they're also very narrow as well all right, it's rose to 44k. We've got three more units here as well, so let's move them from Darwin. Uh, probably, yeah, try and hit this, like another smaller island. God, like, some of these don't even connect as well. You actually have to manually, navally invade, which is kind of crazy. Oh, okay. We're doing okay, but we've just been pushed back slightly. We've nearly got all the Borneo under our control. It's this last little sort of island here. Once reinforcements come from Papua, we should be okay. We're weirdly struggling here. We're pushing here. Once we navally invade here... Okay, nice. So it's gone from about a 50-60% towards capitulation. Now it's about a 70%. So maybe even 75 our, to our favour. It's uh, looking real good. Well... Oh, we're about to win over here as well. We might be able to get all of Borneo under our control. Nice. Yeah, if we can commit more forces here... We should be okay. Well, guys, unfortunately, on that note, it's time to end the video here. We're going to leave it on a cliffhanger with the invasion of Indonesia. Stay tuned for episode three, where we're going to be starting exactly where we left off. And hopefully, we can be victorious, but only time will tell. Things are looking really, really good at the moment. 
we've got them on the back foot massively. Hopefully it can t continue. And let me know what, what I should do with the country. Should I puppet half of it? Should I control all of it? What should I do? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like and sub if you haven't already. Would really much appreciate it if you're enjoying this Millennium Dawn Australian campaign. And let me know a suggestion for other factions you would like me to do in this series. We've done Germany, we've done the US, now Australia. Let me know who else you want me to play as. Also got to say a massive thank you to this month's YouTube channel members. Massive thank you to Divine Overhand, Mikey, Eric, Chuckles, The Hut, Green, Nero One, Dimitri H, and Hector Bay. Thanks for being channel members, guys. Really, really appreciate it. All right, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.